I suppose that's still a trial and error. We, we've been planning 34, 35,000 probably for roughly 10 years. Uh, this year, uh, we, we, we've got uh, the, the about a 10 acre plot where we've got about 40,000 in. Uh, about half our acres, we're in at about 36, 50. We're probably in our dry sands, we're probably at 30,000. 30, our good loamy soils, dry land with loamy soils, we're at 32, 33, which is good conditions. Uh, irrigated, bottom be 35, top would be 40. But the biggest thing in all that is spacing. You know, I mean, you're wasting your time if you think you're going to go out there and plant 38,000 at 5 miles an hour, because that is a waste of time. Your spacing has to be just right on when it gets to that 36 to 38,000. I mean, because every, every time we get into the these high uh, populations, we would walk through our cornfields and look for the dink stalks, the small little spindling stalks. Every year the percentage changes. I would say this year we're probably at a lower percentage than what we had on our irrigated ground. And it seems as though if your spacing isn't correct, your, your dinks, the percentage goes up. And we haven't been able to figure out why we get the dinks. I mean, everybody has them. I've walked to their farmers' fields. Everybody has them, but the spacing is so crucial. And if you're not willing to drive slow, stay stable. With plant populations, um, this again, you know, you talked about, oh, they just, you know, you want to sell more seed. Uh, your your value that you have to determine on the farm, right? You know what your profitability is, you know what your cost of production is, and it has to figure into this. If you are unsure, you need to start uh, doing some testing on your farm. I mean, generally, our plants now are bred for better drought tolerance and higher populations because we have to create this doubling of corn yield um, in the future here somehow. And, and the plant can only produce so much. So the idea is what are we doing for nitrogen utilization in the future, drought tolerance, and then population tolerance. And you need to keep that practice up every year, testing on your farm by an the way we look at it, um, I'm not good at converting acre to hectare, so I apologize for that. But going 4,000 plants per acre incrementally will help you. You try three different populations. Start your normal, then go 4,000, 4,000, 4,000, and see what you get. And, and that will give you kind of a baseline. You need to keep doing that because these hybrids are changing every year with better plant genetics and better agronomic characteristics that will support higher populations. I guess what we have is, and we've heard it here already, is every farm, every field, every grower is uh, different. And some of our, some of these soils, you know, we we know they've got poor fertility, we know they've got poor pH, we know they've got poor rotation, and dropping 40,000 seeds on a farm with a yield potential of 120 bushels, it just doesn't make economic sense. So, you know, utilize, talk, talk to the grower, look at your fields, and, uh, you know, have a realistic yield goal for each individual field, and if you've got a field that is well manured, well rotated, got excellent fertility, you know, push that seed population up and, and talk to your sales rep, and uh, you know, the information is out there from the seed company to, to tell you what the most uh, economical seed drop for that variety is, and uh, go for it on those, on those high productive soils. Yeah, I agree with that. If you're just you know, addressing the high, high productive soil situation, um, you know, and Karen touched on it, the drought tolerance and the stalk strength that we're breeding in the hybrids these days, um, I'd be at 35,000 plus on your most productive ground. I think that's where you need to be. And it's going to vary a little bit by hybrid channel to how flat steer or fixed steer this particular product, particular hybrids may be on, on, on operation. But, uh, you know, he's got to kind of hit those numbers. That's, that's where you want to be on the most productive ground and maybe even. As Carl mentioned, trying a little bit higher to see if that's going to work out for you. Yeah, I just thought I'd come back again with the uh, and a lot of these fellow panel members have said I, I agree with. Uh, one of the things we found is that not all varieties or hybrids respond to the high population. You've got to figure it out. Uh, in Pioneer's case, uh, if you get after your sales rep, uh, he, he can come up with the, the, uh, the, I guess you'd say the graphs through pioneer research on, 
on, on how a particular hybrid responds to, to the, the, the higher population. And, and so that's the ones you, 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 you've got to pick out. Uh, the other thing I'd like to say is that uh, if, if you have got pretty high fertility, uh, probably a higher population isn't, isn't where you should be. You've got to get your, your P up and you've got to get your K up there. And you've also got to start looking at your micronutrients. Uh, a lot of soil tests, we, we, we don't get the reading on the nitro, nitro, uh, nitro of the micros and the trace elements. And I think as we push the higher population for higher yields, we have to look at these traces and, and, and all that. I think they're, they're, part of it is they're being depleted because we haven't had the acid rain like we've had historically. Uh, the other possibility is we're just depleting the soils and, and I don't think that's only in Ontario. I think if, if uh, you do enough research, uh, the U.S. soils will show the same thing. Uh, if, if, if you've done the, 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 the research on, on what those readings were 20 years ago to what they were today. That's a nice lead into 